Hi, this is Steve Stevens, and I'm speaking to you from Hollywood, California, where I, uh, 25 years ago, recorded Dirty Diana with Michael Jackson. And um, most important thing is that Michael's music will live on forever and will be the greatest of all time. I mean, it's uh, something I will always cherish, and, um, and his music will always be the most powerful thing about him. Quincy Jones called me and I had just been signed to Warner Brothers Records and my A&R guy was uh, Ted Templeman who was the producer of Van Halen and Ted and Quincy were friends so that's how um, it's actually how Eddie Van Halen ended up doing uh, Beat It so when it came time for the next record uh, Quincy called Ted and said well who who can we get we you know we want to do something we don't want to do the same thing again and Ted uh, suggested me, and then I got a phone call. I was living in New York at the time. I got a phone call from Quincy Jones. And so the phone rang, and I thought somebody was fucking with me. And so I kind of, you know, hung up the phone. The phone rings again, and he goes, now, don't hang up because this is the real, the real deal. And um, he said, uh, you know, I got your number from Ted Templeman, and, uh, and we're working on Michael's, you know, uh, follow-up to, uh, to Thriller. And, and uh, would you be interested in coming in and playing on a track? So... That's how that came about. The version that I played on was, I think the track was probably about seven minutes long. You know, they recorded much the same way that, that we did with Billy Idol. We always kind of prepared for dance remixes, extended versions, and, and we always knew that this kind of stuff would be played in, in dance clubs. So you needed, you know, material to do remixes and etc. So... You know, they explained to me that the, you know, the song was going to be edited down, but they were going to give me this full version uh, to play on. And there was, you know, maybe two minutes of guitar solo there and, and, uh, and then the actual, you know, song itself. So uh, it was interesting how they went about doing it. Not that some of the things we did with Billy Idol, but obviously this was a more of um, electronic stuff happening, electronic beats and things and... It was not a big entourage or anything. It was just, you know, four guys in a, in a studio, you know, just trying to, you know, make great music. And it, that kind of put me at ease, you know. But then you realize we're all just kind of, you know, just here to make music. And, um, and, uh, and once we got down to it, all of that other stuff kind of fell away. And it was just kind of spoke in musical terms. And, and Michael was really, really very, very musical, you know. It wasn't, you know, the things that he requested and asked for were all... You know, really cool ideas. He understood what I was about, and and was mm -hmm. trying to get the best out of my performance. So um, it was it was a great, great, great session. You know, I had my preconceived ideas of maybe what I was coming into, and uh, the first thing that struck me was the song is a lot darker and a lot heavier than I thought I would be playing on. Um, and it seemed, you know, it seemed like it was, you know, a, a real edge of kind of. Um, you know, almost an underlining current of of uh, nastiness to it, you know, which was great for me because, you know, as a guitar player, you kind of want to dig in and you want to play aggressively. And I'm, I was really glad that it wasn't like a pop song or something. It was like a real kind of dark and, you know, allowed me to kind of dig into the kind of heavier side of what I do. Shooting the video was was incredible as well, and you know, you know, a day I'll never never forget. I I think actually the a lot of the takes that we did that didn't end up in the video were even more incredible. There was one point, unfortunately, on a, the camera angles weren't correct, but there's one point where I was playing and, and Michael ran across the stage and literally slid between my legs and came behind me and kind of pulled my guitar out of my hands and and the whole crew and everybody just like what everyone erupted in applause, but. <laughs> I guess the angles weren't correct. They didn't get the you know the best the best version of that. So that's not in the video. But and then you know all of our uh, the whole time you know there's a lot of time spent when you're not shooting when they're just setting up for shots and you know we just talked about rock and roll music. You know I remember him telling me 
that his favorite rock band was Queen and that he knew Freddie Mercury and had, he had seen a bunch of Queen shows and he said that uh, for his next tour he really wanted to have as, as much of a visual show as Queen did and I had never seen Queen so you know I, I was kind of explaining what a Billy Idol show was like he hadn't seen us and and then he asked me about um, Motley Crue. He asked me if I knew Motley oh, Crue. Yeah. yeah, I said I didn't know Motley Crue. I was from New York, but uh, I knew the New York Dolls. <laughs> Steve Stevens and Jennifer, thank you. Right, yeah, I came down to sound check, and um, and uh, at first the you know the choreographer he had a choreographer, and he said, well. So he's trying to explain to me where I should be in this and that, and I, I, and I said, look, you know, I'm a, I'm a rock and roll guitar player, I'm not a dancer, and, you know, I'll, I'm going to come out and do my thing, but if you tell me and, you know, just explain to me and what you want, and he said, well, we want this guitar battle with you and Jennifer, and I said, great, I'll talk to her and we'll work it out, because I would never worked with a choreographer, it's not, you know, that's a whole nother world for me, and I said, it's going to end up being more confusing and probably not end up being what you want. It's better if I just work it out with the other musician and we'll, we'll give you what you want in the end. And, and then I understood, you know, that the first thing I thought of was the conversation that I had had with Michael when doing the video about what he wanted to do uh, for his tour and incorporate a rock and roll, you know, use rock and roll lighting and pyrotechnics and effects and things that that hadn't been brought to, you know, dance music or R&B or any of the other elements that people expected, you know, from a Michael Jackson. He, he wanted to bring elements of all these kind of things together. And um, it was really cool, you know, it was like... It, I, you know, I, I, I love the fact that it's just, to him, it was just music. It was not trying to put music and musicians in categories. There was no category. The thing that you forget is how big of an impact a Michael Jackson video had. When that video premiered, I remember, and I had done a number of Billy Idol videos, but the day after that video premiered, I had gone out, I was living in Manhattan, and I had gone out for some lunch or something, and I had never been stopped on the street so many times for autographs, and, and uh, you know, it must have been like 25, 30 people during the course of the day asking me for autographs, just because that video aired the day before on MTV. So, it's, you know, it was a, just a huge, back then... You know, a video premiering, a Michael Jackson video premiere was a huge deal. 